Hello, everybody. How are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton, and I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I'm going to make this quick. I recently started a podcast with my very good friend, Elenique Marie. Elenique is a hypnotherapist and, in my opinion, a master teacher of the A Course in Miracles material. She is a very well-studied and well-researched woman, but beyond that, she is just very intelligent and able to workshop and talk about and drill down into very sophisticated spiritual and metaphysical concepts. And I just, I love the conversations that we have together. And that's why this podcast I think is going to be amazing. It's already starting off really, really great. We want to get into the meaty spiritual topics, and we're going to be doing this by going through one by one the most masterful and important spiritual works and books, starting with, you already know, Feeling is a Secret. Feeling is a Secret. In last week's podcast episode, we discussed chapter one of Feeling is a Secret. Next week, we're going to be doing chapter two and so on and so forth. Next month, we are going to be getting into the Kaibalion and we're going to be learning about all the universal laws and having major discussions around this. And then after that, we've got another book. And after that, we've got another book. And we're also building in meditations and rituals and practices into each episode. When I when I tell you it's meaty, I mean that it's meaty because we wanted to create the kind of content that we as spiritual people want to consume. And so this is our offering in that regard. The Miraculous Thinking Podcast, currently available wherever you enjoy your favorite podcasts. We also have a YouTube channel, which offers the video version of our podcast episodes. There's a little bit of a delay, maybe about four or five days. First, it comes out as an audio via podcast, and then it comes out on video the following Monday. But I will drop a link in the description of this video so you can go over to our Miraculous Thinking YouTube channel and join the conversation. Like, follow along in the books as we are reading and give us your questions. We want to hear your commentary. We want to grow a conscious community of spiritual adventurers. And so this is chapter one of Feeling is the Secret from the Miraculous Thinking Podcast, and I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Miraculous Thinking Podcast. I'm Elenique Marie and this is my beautiful co-host Crystal Ann Compton and we're so excited to be here with you today for our first episode. Not our, you know, it's our first episode covering a book, Crystal. Yeah. It's not, it's not, you know, last week was sort of a, a teaser. But today we're going to start with the incomparable Neville Goddard. Feeling is the secret, and it really is. And so I want to jump in, but before we do, I want Crystal's going to share a little bit of information about how these uh, podcasts are going to go, what we're going to cover, and just things to know. So take it away. Yeah, just a little housekeeping so everybody knows what we're doing and how this is going to be organized, at least preliminarily. Things might change as we flow and shift, but preliminarily, the way we're going to do it is each week we are going to cover a chapter or a couple of chapters in a book. Each month we will be dealing with and talking about a different book. This month we're obviously talking about Feeling is the Secret. This is our first episode in which we dive into that. So we're just going to be talking about the first chapter of Feeling is the Secret this week. Next week, it's going to be chapter two. The week after that, chapter three. And the fourth week of September will be the fourth and final chapter of Feeling is the Secret. And then in October, we're going to move to the Kaibalion, however we say that. I think it's yeah. Kaibalion, Kaibalion. But we're just going to move through kind of in a methodical pace, and we're going to hash out concepts and talk about different things. But we really want to engage our listeners and our viewers. And so if you have questions about the material or as we're going through it, if something kind of sparks for you and you're like, hey, what about this? Or does this apply in this area? We really want to encourage you to reach out to us. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. The first way is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you should have already been done. 
Yes. I already been done that. Get up on YouTube, look for Miraculous Thinking. There's a link in the description and subscribe. And if you have a question or something you think we should reflect upon with regard to the content that we're dealing with, go ahead and just drop a question right there in the comment section. We're going to be reading through those. And if it's germane, if it fits, we will definitely include that in the next podcast or the one after that. Another way that you can reach out to us with your questions and your thoughts is just by writing to us at Miraculous Thinking at gmail.com miraculous thinking is one word no hyphen no space miraculous thinking at gmail.com let us know what your question is and again if it makes sense we will include it because we want this to be something that we're all doing together it's not just ellen and i although really if it was we'd have a lot of fun <laughs> it was just us we'd have a lot of fun but we really want to open this up for conversation and for everybody else and we've been talking to ellen about perhaps starting a Facebook group. I mean, irrespective of how, you know, gross Facebook can be, it is still like the platform with the most functionality for groups. What do you think? Do you think we should do that? I mean, I would love that. I I just believe that, you know, in the intention that we come, we have to utilize things and um, that are available to us to transform them, you know, in the matrix, (laughs) (laughs) we have to use it to change it, right? So I believe in utilizing things for the greater good. And I believe that those, those groups really offer support. And um, it's a great place to meet and ask questions and grow. So yes. Okay, so then Let's give ourselves a little deadline, poo. Yeah, we will have by the, next week. We'll by have next it. week, yes, by next we week. Will. Okay, we so will we'll have, have a Facebook group. We'll have we'll put it links in the description so you can find us. But it'll be really great because I think that's where we're going to be posting the schedule of books, yes. like what's coming next, what chapters we're working in, and also for people who have questions or do want to participate, that would be a great place to just drop a question and have us see it for sure. But that's not this week. It will be next week and we'll give you the information (laughs) on that. Absolutely. The the last thing I wanted to just mention really quick before we, we begin is that we are going to try to build in some meditations and some practices during episodes. Now we can't promise every single episode, but like maybe you know, maybe. maybe, but definitely today we're going to have a little meditation that Elenique is going to walk us through. And so all of these kind of segues or these uh, parts of the pod are going to be time stamped in the description of the video or of the podcast. And we mentioned this because if you listen to us while you are commuting or if you're out and about in the safe way, <laughs> you know, and you're not necessarily in a quiet environment and we start transitioning into the meditation, you want to make sure that you pause and reserve that for a later time. Can you speak a little bit to that, Elanique? Absolutely. Um, We definitely want to bring you into uh, an altered state where the things that we are going to be discussing can really just drop down, you know, into that fertile subconscious territory where we want it to take hold and bloom. So in order to do that, we really need to alter a little bit perception. And for that reason, please do not use heavy equipment, machinery, driving. Hell, don't do your taxes. None of that. Don't do any of that (laughs) while while you're listening to us. So please pick a time and a place where you're uninterrupted and 100% safe. Absolutely. And then we'll come out after the meditation. We'll have a few closing words and some thoughts, and that'll be the podcast. But that's kind of the format that we're working with right now. And we're feeling really good about it. Mm -hmm. So having said all that, why don't we get into it? Let's do it. Let's jump in. (laughs) Well, I thought we would start with um, just our overview of the first chapter of Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. Now, I will just say that this is a work that I have covered. I mean, I've read it a bazillion times. It's typically on my nightstand. It's been here in my office lately, but it's just something I go to all the time. And this is a work that I find to be just packed with power words or magical attuning words. It's almost like You don't even have to be present intellectually as you're reading all of the words. If you're present energetically or in your spirit, you're going to get the attunement. You're going to get what Neville is actually offering through this work. So it's such a powerful work. I teach on it in my groups every single year. I've got to do that. I've got to, you know, I go live and we just read it and then we just talk about it and then we do Q and A. It's just a fantastic piece of work. So I'll start us off with my impression of the first chapter, which is entitled The Law and Its Operation. And what the law is, I think, 
I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know that I am though, but <laughs> the law <laughs> is creation. It's the law of creation and truly how to manifest. And this chapter gets into the law and specifically the mechanics of creation or the mechanics of manifestation, like the mechanics that are built into who it is that we are. And that's kind of where I think we should start with the realization that right here and right now, you have everything you need native unto yourself within you to manifest exactly what it is that you want and intend for your life at the highest level. And so that's the first empowering idea and truth that I think we need to grasp is that that law and that operation that's all inside of you and it works. Maybe you haven't been working the law or working the mechanics, but you have it right now inside of you. And so this first chapter is Neville really breaking down what those mechanics are, how the whole system works and what you should be mindful of, as you said about on your path of creation. That's my general takeaway of the first chapter. What about you, mama? Absolutely. Uh, Preach sister. Love it. I agree. (laughs) And uh, that's, it's the foundation for everything, isn't it? The realization that nothing is outside of you. Everything is within you. And then uh, I think towards the end, which is what I'll speak to after is sort of um, how do we do that? You know, how do we think and transition that knowledge, that law, once we comprehend the law, because if we don't know the law, we're going to break the law which is what I think a lot of us live constantly breaking that law or applying it incorrectly, like you said. So now once we know, then what do we do with that? So, yeah. Okay. Well, I selected some passages from this chapter because of course we can't, well, we could read the whole thing, but it would take a really long time. (laughs) And then we would talk about it. We'd be here all day. So, but I selected some passages that I felt like, "Mm," just hit the spot and really, Mm -hmm exemplify the principles that Neville is talking about in this chapter. So I'll go ahead and share what I have. And then I know you selected some passages too, but like, let's just workshop these concepts and apply them to our lives as well, if we can. The first one comes from, it's the first, it's the first paragraph in chapter one law and its operation. And it reads as follows, the world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. And just to kind of simplify this concept a little bit, when Neville says that the world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness, objectified. Objectified means outpictured or made into a physical reality or something that's showing up on the screen of your life. And everything that you experience every day that's happening on this proverbial screen of your life, your wealth, your health, your relationships, your job, all of that is is something that you're creating. And what Neville is saying here is that that's all a condition of, or it is all a byproduct of your conditioned consciousness. What I wanted to ask you, Elenique, is what do you think Neville means here when he says conditioned consciousness? Well, conditioned consciousness to me is the aggregate of your how you were raised. So the family system that you grew up in, the religion that you grew up in, the society that you grew up in, your epigenetics. So the genetics that are within your body, which are uh, ancestral, you know, we've been inheriting them. You also have ancestral patterns that are not in the genetics and yet karmically, energetically keep repeating and form part of that conditioning. So that conditioned self is what in human design we call the not self. It's the things that we we take on and we hold in our bodies and, and live with that are not who we truly are. There are things that have been put upon us, but they're not our authentic self. That is the conditioned self. So like a filter, it's the filter, a filter. that Absolutely. we walk around in. And so, you know, in, in the way that I have taught metaphysics is that, you know, the consciousness is the whole of who it is that we are as a soul or as an oversoul, like almost the uh, undefinable, ineffable being that we truly are. And yet when we incarnate into this life, we do have to filterize ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we have to enter into this dense body and live in this 3D matrix. And we have to, we have to be conditioned somewhat just to the incarnation itself. But then we further condition ourselves 
through the things that we do, through the things that we choose to believe and what we what we do believe without choice, unconscious beliefs of self and of others. So all of this is our conditioned consciousness or our conditioned incarnation, who it is that we right now are right now. And so what Neville is saying very clearly here is that the whole world and everything you experience is as a result of your conditioned consciousness. And what he's going to take us through now is trying to understand that process. And he's going to give us a peek into how we can recondition our consciousness because if life's not working for you right now my friend that's a you problem (laughs) you know (laughs) i mean it's a me problem too since we are all one but that really is something that's happening because of the way you view yourself and feel yourself to be in this life so that's that first foray into the subject by good old by good old neville and i love it the second passage that i selected is actually in my book a couple of pages later And it reads as follows. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. I'm going to say that again. It's so powerful. Control of your feeling or your emotions is all important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself or others. To do so is to impress the subconscious with these limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole of the law. Everything else is commentary. So what Neville is saying here is that how you feel truly dictates your experience and your creative manifestation in your life. And Neville is very clear here, and he continues to be clear. And actually, he repeats himself quite a lot, which is, I'm sure you could say, some a tool, right? It's a technique yes. to embed the concept within you. But what he's saying here is that how you feel is absolutely everything. I actually pulled a scripture for this, which is Ephesians 4.26, which is, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And the reason I pulled this is because this scripture implies that it's okay to sin. I mean, not sin. It's okay to be angry. In fact, it's incredibly human and natural to be angry. But where you fall into sin is through the indulging of the anger, dwelling on the feeling that got you there in the first place. And I would say that the majority of people are spending all day and all night dwelling on the feeling that has been programmed into them by this world, by social media, by politics, by divisive issues, by war, all of the things that are present in our world right now that we are taking in and ingesting that's causing us to feel a certain way. And everything we experience in our life after that is because of how we allow ourselves to feel. It's okay to be anxious in a moment. It's okay to be afraid in a moment or aggrieved in a moment, but it's a moment. You don't then dwell and protract and prolong your karma and stay in the space of that and continue to create from that. This is very important to understand. And I think it's also a good point to kind of just stop and explain the mechanics of manifestation here because we're referring to the subconscious and we need to kind of set that up a little bit if that's absolutely. okay can i yes. take a moment All right yes absolutely so the mechanics of manifestation according to neville goddard are as follows we are the consciousness crystalline compton consciousness but i have three different distinct parts or parts of the machine when it comes to manifestation. The first is the conscious, the thinking aspect of who it is that I am. Neville would call this the masculine of of me. It's the masculine aspect and everyone has a masculine aspect. Everyone has a female aspect or a feminine aspect. The conscious is that part of me that thinks, that comes up with ideas, that engages in the imagination. If I'm running some affirmations because I want to create something that's happening in the thinking capacity of who it is that I am. Now, the other side of that coin is the subconscious. The subconscious, again, is the feminine or the female aspect of who it is that we are. And this is the aspect that creates ever is the subconscious creating. And I love when Neville says that the subconscious sets about in a way known only unto itself to give you all that you have felt yourself to be. 
So we don't even have to worry, therefore. Well, like, okay, I really want this, but how am I ever going to get it? How do I plan for it? What are my goal steps? What's the next thing that I've got to do? The subconscious, the womb of creation has got this. Mm -hmm. And again, this is built in functionality right now within all of us. So conscious male, subconscious female, but they have to be able to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. So the subconscious wants to hear all of the good things that you want to create. And the way that the subconscious receives that message is through, well, the title of this book gives us a very clear indication, feeling. Mm -hmm. Feeling is the secret. If you think something but don't feel it, your subconscious is not going to receive it and therefore you will not manifest it, period. So if you have an affirmation and your affirmation is, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise, that's great. But do you feel that? Until you get to the place in your imagination, in your imaginal mind, and really in an embodied way, and those things aren't separate, they're not separate, in an embodied way, until you can feel yourself as healthy, my body is healthy, it is thriving, and I am wealthy, I have all that I need and more, until you can capture that as a feeling, the transmission does not go through to the subconscious, but the moment you do have it, that is all you need. The moment you can feelingly think a thing, now you are creating that thing. So that's the mechanics of manifestation, according to Neville Goddard. Again, think it, feel it, and now the womb of creation, she's got it, and the universe is giving it back to you. Right? Would you say that's correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the sections that uh, spoke to me, which deals with that, with the womb of creation, um, he says, the subconscious accepts as true that which you feel is true. And because creation is the result of subconscious impressions, so literally creation is the result of subconscious impressions, you by your feeling determine your creation. And that's hard to hear sometimes for people because um, it's hard to, to take responsibility for when your life externally is showing up as a hot mess And you're like, why do these things keep happening to me? You know, it's sort of a victim mentality um, where things happen to you. Fate, you know, the world, the man, whoever is happening to you. But what he's saying is all the creation that is manifesting for you is the result of the subconscious impressions that live within you. And whether or not those were placed there through your experiences, through your family, through, you know, your religion, your culture. Now that you see that what is outside of you is not working, then you need to change those impressions in order to be able to create an external reality that pleases you. So the negative feedback, if you want to call it, of a dissatisfying life in any way, shape, or form is feedback. It's telling us, hey, this is not, this is not working. I'm not happy here. I'm not vibrating with this. Or identifying that feeling, you can utilize uncomfortable, sad, mad, you know, depressed. You can use those feelings and say, oh, thank you. This is my barometer. I've gone really off here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to heal them one at a time. And he goes into his version of how we fix it. But I have my own theory about how (laughs) we deal with those. Well, Esther Hicks talks about this too, when she talks about how our uncomfortability, our suffering, that's just contrast. It's showing Mm -hmm. you the way back to center, which is where you truly want to be, right? But you're, but you're right. It's, it's how you feel. It's how you feel yourself to be that dictates the creation and everything that's showing up. And you're right too, Elanique, when you talk about how people don't like to get this far, because to get this far means you have to take radical responsibility for your part in what is being created, not just individually in your own life, like your own broken relationship with that guy you've been with for 10 years, who's an addict and who abuses you. Like you have a part in that. In fact, you're creating that but it takes radical responsibility to identify that the call is coming from inside the house. And now I've got to change the signal. I've got to change the signal. I do want to ask, maybe we should simplify what a subconscious impression is. So what, what would you say a subconscious impression is? Um, well, it's essentially when we're born, 
from the ages of zero to seven years old, you're all subconscious. Right. That's Aren't we why, like in a hypnagogic state the whole time? Yeah, you are. Right. It's, I mean, that's why we condition the children. That That's what we're doing. We're indoctrinating them. You know, we talk about, you know, we talk about all these cults, but life is the biggest cult, right? Society is the <laughs> biggest cult because if we condition you in a way that pleases us, it's normal and healthy. But if you're conditioned in a way that is not working for society, then you have a problem or you're in a cult, right? Mm -hmm. But we're all, we're all conditioned. So essentially between zero and seven years old, you're just subconscious. That's why when you tell a little kid, um, there's a dragon outside giving candy, they'll literally run outside. There is no division. You know, they're like, where's the dragon? You know, and they're going to go get the candy. So about eight years old, you start developing this thing called the critical mind. And it's sort of a filtering system that begins to utilize logic and reason to evaluate whether something is true or false based on experience. And that about closes somewhere around 14, 15 years old, that critical mind is solidified. So whatever beliefs were dropped into your subconscious when you were a little kid, if you were told you were slow or stupid or you gain weight or nobody likes you, all those things are knowns to you. It's what you know to be true because it already made it in the subconscious. So now when your conscious mind sees examples in your daily life that no, you're not slow, you're actually really smart and people think you're amazing. You know that on a conscious level, but you don't feel it in the subconscious. And because you don't feel it, that subconscious is going to constantly be attracting experiences that prove to you that you, in fact, are what that subconscious is saying. It's You're going to be looking through glasses, looking for validation that, in fact, you are those negative beliefs that you have within there. So the subconscious is a repository for your deeply held stories. That's what I call it. I mean, the subconscious is the stories we tell about the things that happen. Because ultimately, things just happen. They don't, there, there's, there's nothing good or bad except when we start to begin to tell the story. Right? right. If you look at any world war, if you look at the winner and the loser, each one's talking about the same event, but each one has a different story about who was the bad guy and who was right and who was wrong. So the event just happens. And then comes the stories that we tell. The stories that we tell is how we store the event in the subconscious. And it's it's difficult because, you know, you sometimes you're not even aware of the story you're telling. That's where consciousness comes in. That's mm -hmm. where we have to do the work. So basically, we need to examine those beliefs in order to shift them, change them, move them so that we can put in in there what we truly desire, what we want to manifest, and then watch the outside world just change like magic. And it is that easy. The hard part is doing the inner work. Right. Becoming conscious to That's what you are presently unconscious to, like those subconscious impressions are the bricks and the foundation of who it is that you are and you might not really realize that your whole foundation is out of alignment and the house is crooked it's the leaning tower of pizza but once you become conscious to the things that you feel are true not even necessarily think are true you feel them to be true about yourself and others that's when you can start undoing the damage that has been done because everything can be uncreated from that vantage point and then start intentionally impressing the conscious excuse me, subconscious. And so the impression of the subconscious is the message that was sent that was received. And I have another, I actually have another. And was sent with feeling, right? So the, the vehicle for that message right. is a feeling. Correct. Right. So yes. it's not logic. It wasn't somebody sitting talking to a two year old with a whole bunch of spreadsheets, you know, going, you're not good <laughs> because let's analyze your grades from K4. Right. Right. Like it's, it's, it's a feeling. It's an energy that you are right. picking up from people. And sometimes it's not even their intention mm -hmm. because there is a part of you that you come programmed with due to DNA, due to karma. If you believe in, you know, past lives and stuff, you come with these um, triggers. And so I could, someone could say to somebody, stand up straight. And that's okay. That person would be like, oh, okay, let me stand up straight. You know, when you're a little kid. And then your mom could tell the other sister, stand up straight. And in her mind, it's like, my mom always said that I was a horrible looking hunchback of Notre <laughs> Dame because she said, you know, so we, mm -hmm. so you cannot put it on the person. A lot of it is how you are receiving it. Absolutely. What you're doing with it. And 
This next passage from the book, I think, is so important. Uh, Neville says, quote, the subconscious is not concerned with the truth or the falsity of your feeling. It always accepts as true that which you feel to be true, mirroring what uh, Paul said in Romans 2, 1, 1, God is not a respecter of persons, meaning right. it, it is the subconscious, which again animates everything, creates everything you're experiencing tomorrow. This is created in the subconscious. It does not tell you, hey, Crystal, that feeling that you're feeling right now, yes. you might want to feel something different because you, you know, I'm going to have to create from that feeling all of this further suffering and the perpetual relationship issues that you're having because you're allowing yourself to feel that way. No, the subconscious never corrects you. It is not a respecter of the feeling itself. It just, as a wife does, because Neville also talks about how Paul likens the conscious or the male aspect to the husband and the female to the wife and how the wife rises to the lover and gives herself over to the lover and takes in the lover and just with love does she do this and with love does she create from this union, never questioning, right. never, never, never trying to edit what is being given, but just with love receiving. And so I think that's so very important. Um, and the first right. order of business, I think, if I may just say, is if you're listening to this and if you're catching what we're throwing down, you need to start paying attention to how you're feeling throughout the day. I would dare say, maybe put put something into your timer, like a timer on your phone, have it go off four to six times a day. And when it does, just check in. Like, how do I actually feel in my physical body right now? Am I feeling tense? Do I feel anxious? Am I joyful? Am I yes. happy? like where's the contrast what in your life is showing up right now to remind you to get back into that joy or into that place of happiness but you have to know how you're feeling if you want to change what you're creating am i right absolutely and when we get to a course in miracles um in built into the lessons they talk about the hourly reminders of checking in with spirit so you are checking in every hour and you're seeing what did i how what was my vibration this hour what were the thoughts? What did I accomplish? Did I have a fight? Did I have a, a what they call a, um, when something bothers you, you know, something very slight, but um, in the, in the book, it says there are no small upsets. Everything is, a, if your peace is disturbed, it's equally as disturbing. So peace is peace and anything that upsets it, it's not small because now you've lost peace mm -hmm. over a fly, over a pothole, over, you know, traffic, whatever it may be, or over a war. It doesn't matter. It's it's all disturbing your peace. So that's going to be amazing when we when we get to talk about wow. that real awareness and checking in with yourself. That's blowing my mind a little bit. We were just talking yesterday on Zoom and there was a fly. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Flies just send me into a weird, irrational place. So does like stuff going wrong with my tech. Like that just makes me irrationally angry. And I think it, I was a missionary a long time ago. I went to Fiji and we ended up going to this village called Nangelawai. It was a beautiful village, beautiful people. And I stayed in this hut with this family and we slept on mats. But during the day, those lauhala mats, those woven mats were just a, a, a sea of black flies. Oh, there were flies everywhere. And I, I think it left such a subconscious impression on me. <laughs> Well, that's why you're my best friend, because <laughs> let me tell you, I have the same problem with flies. My, my son, I, I kill him with like, like a, a book, you know, I'm like literally mm -hmm. like Annie Oakley, you know, whew, whew, you know, like with the book goes mm -hmm. flying and I'm hitting the flies and mosquitoes that, and the same thing with tech, I, I lose my mind when the tech doesn't work. I'm like, why isn't this working? I, I feel like I don't know I what it is. so crazy, but like it, if it's taking you out of your peace, it yes. is not just a big deal. It's the biggest deal. It because is. Because you always, you want to be in that centered space of peace. And furthermore, you're always creating. So you want to always be intentionally creating from peace. And so if a fly has the power to throw yes. you out of it, you might want to do some, Chris, uh, some work, Crystal and Compton. I know, I know we all do, Crystal. We all have these. These are all, this is what we live with. Yeah. And, and that's really, to me, when do you know you're awakened? When the small things don't bother you. Mm. It's easy to not let the big things bother you. You can get philosophical. You can put distance between you and that horrible thing that's happening. But those little tiny things, that's where you can judge your progress. Oof. How present am I here? Yeah. 
have some work to do. I see <laughs> if a fly <laughs> is throwing me off my throne of glory. Lord you know. Jesus. <laughs> okay. By the way, I'd like yeah. to just add that I think Paul had some serious mommy issues. Oh, a hundred percent. I feel like that guy needed some therapy. You know Absol- what I mean? Absolutely. Okay. What is up of, with all of this? Lots man of and the pa- woman and patriarchal that. energy. Yeah. No. I mean, we could go crazy talking about Paul, you know, Carl yes. Jung referred to him as the great usurper because he in fact never was physically there with Jesus unless yes. you count the road to Damascus, which I'm sure he'd want us to since he wants yeah. to be an authority in church, but oh, we could get sidetracked yeah, by let's, Paul all That's the time. a whole other episode. <laughs> but there are so many esoteric layers to yes. Paul and when yes. he's speaking about the husband and the wife, as opposed to rules and regulation, I think he's talking about this beautiful relationship between the masculine and the feminine that exists within us. So that Paul, I can get behind. Yes, that aspect of Paul. You see, we can even debate Paul, even the words that are on paper. We can. All right, my next quote that I pulled out is, quote, sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Be careful, therefore, of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. I'm going to say that again. It's so good. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Can you speak to that? What is that? How does that land with you? That's really deep, you know, um, and we do, we carry the scars, uh, you know, when we're angry and anger becomes an addiction because it's a chemical soup, right? And we can talk about that some other day about just the, the biology of emotions because they're chemicals, you know, they're not just ideas, they're chemical responses and these chemical responses can become addictive. And so there are people that are addicted to being mad and there are people that are addicted to being sad and all the chemicals and emotions that come with that. And so when you live a life where you're constantly getting mad, over time, you start to see the wear and tear on your body. You destroy your heart. You destroy your circulation. You destroy your blood pressure. You hurt your organs. You're having a chemical reaction in the body because of all the thoughts that you are having. And so you, your thoughts are creating a biological, physiological response within you. That is truth. And that is why when people have high blood pressure, they suddenly start sending them to yoga. Well, you need to do some yoga and some mindfulness and some meditation. Absolutely, because change your state of mind, change your physiology. It's not woo-woo, it's reality. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think in a way, that's what he's referring to. It's that we are wearing those scars, but beyond the scars of biology, the biological scars, we have the emotional scars, the psychological scars. I mean, dealing with that inner chatter, that belief system that will not let you go about that one thing that happened or that one thing somebody did to me, that what that puts you through. And they're not sitting in that soup, you are. So we're never hurting anybody else with our negative thoughts and our, you know, anger. We're, we're hurting ourselves. We're the ones that are bearing the scar of it. And so that's why forgiveness is so important because when you can change the story and forgive, you free yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what you're freeing. When you speak of emotional scars, I, it, there's this idea, and I do believe it, that anything physicalized or crystallized into materiality must first have an energetic pattern or it must be alive in the energy first. Yes. And if indulged, or uh, if allowed, you know, and if supported and fed, if you will, will Mm -hmm. slowly but surely start to physicalize. And with emotional trauma, and with the things that we're harboring within ourselves, uh, the offenses that we have against others, the um, feelings of feeling less than or not worthy or like a failure. These are things that if we indulge them, if we feel them to be true, feeling is it, feeling is not just a noun. It is an active. It's a verb. Mm-hmm. We're feeling this. It's moving. That energy is moving and alive inside of us. If we allow this, that's how it starts to crystallize. That's how it starts to physicalize. And it will every single time show up in your body. First, it's going to oh, yeah. be somewhere in your chakras. 
your aura yeah. is just your projection from the chakras, you know, and then it's going to make its way into your tissues and all of the other ways that you said, but the precursor is the energy. And Neville says right here, sensation precedes manifestation. Sensation is the emotion. That's just it is. a different way to say the That's feeling it. that you are allowing yourself to feel. And in the, the ancient yogis, they had this, um, this philosophy that the body was divided into three layers, right? We have the physical or gross body and um, you have the um, energy body, right? Which is um, the mind body, the mental body, where you have your emotions, your intellect, your mind, your thoughts. And not only from this generation, but like from lifetimes, right? Is the mm -hmm. argument there. And then um, you have at the end of that, the subtle body where we are the light, right? The light from which we come. What And, and, and the crazy part is, that, I'm sorry, the causal body. The causal body is that light body. Okay. But um, the that mental body can be called the subtle body. It can be called the astral body. It's where the template lives. The template that is manifesting as the physical body and the life that you are having now is living in a template, an energetic template mm. above you. Mm. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to change that template. Yeah. We're trying to go up there in the template and we're trying to say, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. We want to put that in here. And when we change the template, just like a building blueprint, we change the building, right? right. But we are the building of God, of consciousness. So our life is an extension of that building. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, this blueprint isn't working. And how do I know? Because I don't feel good and my life doesn't match what I want. So now let me use these feelings, both negative and positive, to be my guidance system. So who built the template? Well, consciousness in consciousness differentiated into soul, right? Because mm -hmm. we are so consciousness is the, the undefined everythingness. And then we have an individuated aspect of consciousness which some people call soul, some people call oversoul, some people, you know, whatever children of God, however you want to call it. Those aspects that have fallen into the dream in order to experience themselves and grow. So that's just a theory though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. This is good stuff. I'm really yeah. enjoying it. Okay. But that, you know, that also mirrors some of the dimensions of light teaching, which teaches that anything that shows up in physicality in the third dimension, which is, of course, this earth plane dimension, must first be created in the sixth dimension, which is the dimension of sacred geometry and templatry. Mm -hmm. And so there's the idea that uh, personalities like Nikola Tesla was kind of riding the lightning between the dimensions and he's pulling down like the templatry and the technology from 6D, which deals with the technology of spirit and the technology yes. of love, as well as actual scientific technology, but he's pulling it down through the function and the body of himself in 3D and then he's, he's bringing it into, he's bringing it into this earth experience. So it kind of both of those ideas. I love it. Interestingly complement And that, each the other. highest technology is love. It is. The highest technology is love. It's the thing that heals. It's the thing that, that sows. It's the thing that grows. It's the thing that is life. Life. All the intelligence and everything that exists comes from love. Amen. And it is a loving universe, no matter how it seems to look from the perspective that we're looking at, because life is fostered. Life is constantly being fostered. Evolution is constantly being fostered. So I believe love is that language. And like you said, it comes down. And, and, and those people are, are the, the light. You know, we, in human design, they have a thing called the reflector. It's like 1% mm -hmm. of the population. And it's the ones that you kind of gauge what's going on by their response to the, you know, to the world. I think we have those people that come and they are. They're not, they don't seem from this world. They don't fit in. Because they are. And if you look at the story of all these creative geniuses, they never fit in. They're they're weird. You <laughs> right. know, people always are like, this guy was so weird, you know. But that's because they're not supposed to. They are really between two worlds, like you say. Mm -hmm. For sure. In touch with the causal and dwelling yes. in the physical. So, so good. Okay. Yeah. Let me move on. I, am I taking Good. up too much time with with all of my quotes? I can no, I think we're 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 we're, we're, <laughs> we're discussing doing... them, so okay. it's great. <laughs> all right. Um, 
Next, quote, the subconscious, which again is the feminine, the womb of creation, never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to throw in there to kind of Mm -hmm. concretize the notion that it just never doesn't work. It works every single time. The subconscious, as soon as she gets it, she's she's gestating she's marinating and that baby's coming into form within her but the only way she can get it just to underline the concept is through feeling because if you don't feelingly think upon yourself or others or the world the subconscious is not going to get the impression of this no and and again the issue is that that time period right i mean people say oh i really really want this i feel it You know what I've discovered working with people in coaching that never ceases to shock me, and even in hypnotherapy, that when I ask them to do their visualizations every morning about what it is that they want to create, after like a couple of times, they'll be like, yeah, but it's kind of hard or, you know, I get bored. I say you get bored of imagining that which you say is your deepest dream and desire. You get you get tired of trying to awaken that experience within yourself, then you got to ask yourself how bad you really want it. Because the things that I want, I want to think about them. I want to feed it. I want to water it. You know, I want to embody it. And so honestly, we are the thing that's keeping that seed. The subconscious is ready. You drop it in there. I want to, you know, win a million dollars. Boom. And then you're like, but that's never going to happen because you don't even give it time. You don't even give it a minute to orchestrate it or you start trying to micromanage it right you call it back it's like hiring the best ceo in the world and then telling him how to do the job right you're like come on man right neville's one of his most famous lectures is order then wait like we don't go into a restaurant order the food and then go back and tell the chef that you got to put the butter down now okay now we start sauteing and now this is how and it's got to be this you you just order and then you sit back you have your cocktail you talk to your friend it's a Mm -hmm. wonderful experience you're flowing there's so much ease and boom 20 minutes later here comes your beautiful meal and everything is perfect and that's how manifestation works as well i did want to ask you a question yes this is a question that i've had a few times that i'm not necessarily clear on the answer when we were children we could imagine i remember just i want to go lie down in my bed and spend two hours just imagining stuff you know or like little boys playing with their gi joes just and they're imagining they're imagining all of these different things how come when we were children and we spent so much time in deep and profound imagination we didn't manifest do you think well the question is what is the outcome of those um fantasies right like when you when you pretend at least when I did that was the whole experience for me I didn't actually expect a giant Barbie dream house to show up in my backyard I was in Barbie's dream house made out of cardboard boxes you know with one renegade Barbie and like all these other ugly dolls that weren't Barbies but that was actually the experience for me I wasn't utilizing it to create anything I was enjoying being in it See, children just, they just play. They just are there in the present moment, feeling it as if it has already happened. So there literally is nothing that universe owes. It's already mm. been complete. Mm. Right? So, so good, yeah. it's only us that's trying to say, okay, I'm going to imagine it, but it's not enough to have it in the imagination. I want you to put it out there in my backyard, you know? Right. And that's why it doesn't flow. Yeah, and I also think it's not attached to a conscious thought of creation. Totally. Like I consciously want to manifest a new experience on my screen of light, and so now I'm going to feel it too. Like it is not actually engaging yep. the mechanics of the the magical manifestation. And it is so beautiful the way that you place that. That was the whole of the experience was to be present in the imagination, and that was yeah. all that was expected. Yeah. That was the outcome. That was the end. That was the manifestation. There's nothing else to look for. Oh, I remember we used to do so these. Um, we took all the food out of my mom's fridge she used to kill us and we had these um uh jardineras where you plant plants uh flower beds yeah in the garden and I would stick the tomatoes and the bananas and everything in there to pretend like we were harvesting them you know we lived in an apartment we didn't it was like <laughs> inner city garden right so um I would pick these things up and in my mind I was in the middle of a farm 
you know, I was farming. I could hear the waterfall. The strawberries to me in my imagination, they were enormous. And I was in just joy until somebody yelled at me, you know, for taking them all out of the fridge. <laughs> but it's just, it's such a beautiful feeling. And I try to remember that. And I almost feel bad for the kids now because I find that they are lacking that imagination because there is no room to develop it. There is no space to wonder. It's very right. organized, isn't it? When yeah. you pop on a video and you're like within an immersive game, there's really not a whole lot of space for you to change the game in no. your imagination. And if you want to change it, they're like, okay, change the skirt, change the shirt. But that's out here. Yeah. It's not happening within you. It's it's some externalized something, you know. And ultimately, there's no difference between in here and out there. I know that. But it does seem to me sometimes, it, it seems sad to me. I, yeah. I love that I was, I think the last, we were the last people mm -hmm. that got to really experience that wonder in that complete way that our generation. I remember my husband talking about his grandfather who was born during the Great Depression or I don't know, in, I think in the 20s. So he went up through all of that, but he only, they were so poor, his only toy was a block of wood. Mm -hmm. He just would go outside and play for hours with his block of wood. It was a train. It was a car. It was a building. It was a this. It was a that. But he, yeah. his imagination was engaged and it was enough. So I share your sentiment with that. Well, Absolutely. I have one more quote that yes. I want to share before we kind of go to you and what you've selected oh. from chapter one of one of the <laughs> best books of all time. Okay. Ever. <laughs> so this is a quote. To seek on the outside for that which you do not feel you are is to seek in vain. Four, we never find that which we want. We find only that which we are. Mic drop. Yeah. For we never find that which we want. We find only that which we are. In short, Neville says, you express and have only that which you are conscious of being or possessing. Quote, to him that hath, it is given. Mm -hmm. End quote. And I'd like to share the actual scripture that he's quoting. And feeling okay. is the secret, which is from Matthew 13, 12. Whoever has been given more, they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they do have will be taken from him. And growing up in Christianity, I mm -hmm. never understood that. Well, this yeah. guy already has so much. Why are you just going to give him more? And then mm -hmm. this guy doesn't have anything and you're going to take away his last block of wood to play with? That yeah. doesn't seem fair. <laughs> but what it's talking about is manifestation. You can only create from that which you have. Right. And so to him that has the knowledge of self, the divine concept of self, to him that understands that that mechanism exists inside of them, more is given. And to him that hath not, to the one that perceives himself to be in lack or scarcity or suffering or uh, failure, devaluement, more is taken away. You are mm -hmm. perpetually creating experiences every morning where more is taken away, more suffering is in yes. your experience because inside of you, you have not. And so mm -hmm. what that really means is to get yourself into a position of hath, of having. Absolutely. And the only way to do that is perhaps the most important thing. And I think we, I hope we started this and we've said so much, but it's the divine concept of self. Have yourself, know yourself to be this truly magical and creative being for you are. The Bible says, come, let us make man in our image. And so it was. And we were created in God's image and with all of the predilections of our creator. And our creator's highest passion is to create. Mm -hmm. And we were created in the same image with the same functionality to create, the same passion to create. We have to know ourselves that way. We have yes. to know that it's possible. Jesus also said to him that believes all things are possible. Yes. Anything that you want, good or bad or indifferent, if you believe it's possible, then boom, it is possible. But if you don't know yourself to be that powerful truly, then you have not. No. And more will be taken away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, we're a hologram. I mean, we're, we are parts of that hologram, you know. Consciousness is one giant thing of which the parts of it are little holograms of the whole right? So the whole is in the part and the part is in the whole. So we have that. We have all of the attributes, the power that 
we have been blessed with as aspects of that consciousness. You know, we're the ones, and and I'll and I'll actually read you a quote here that I think that he says that that talks to to that point, and I believe it's so true. It he says the subconscious accepts as true that which you feel is true, and because creation is a result of subconscious impressions, you by your feeling determine creation. You are already that which you want, and your refusal to believe it is the only reason that you do not see it. Can you say that? last one that last yes again. you are already that which you want and your refusal to believe it is the only reason that you do not see it and and this is it right i do too mm -hmm. because the bottom line is you're already there you're already that it's just this filter and i i you know a lot of people talk about this in different ways but just imagine consciousness is an endless possibility of doors or um, choices, right? Infinite, infinite expressions. But you've got a filter in front of you. And that filter condenses the infinite into whatever you've defined it to be. So if you grew up thinking, like a lot of our mothers, I can be uh, a secretary or a housewife or never get married and just be like an unmarried woman, which some women did because they just didn't like the other two choices, right? Or become a nun. Like if you really thought those were the four things that you could choose from, then there wasn't anything else available to you. But there were women that had the capacity, the, the daring to imagine, no, there's got to be more. And they dreamt that dream. And you and me are sitting here today talking and having this podcast because of those women. The women that dared to open up and expand the window of choice within their own minds of what was possible for them and step through it and attract it. And that is what it is. If you don't believe something's possible for you, it can't be possible for you. You won't allow it. And that's the thing that we have to own. Right. And, and every potential possible outcome is existing right now fluidly within the field of who it is that you are. Exactly. Exactly. And that can go one way or another. Mm -hmm. But the idea that I am already that, which I seek to be or to become or to do, I'm already doing that. I am already mm -hmm. being that. I'm already living that. That's the feeling that is the secret. And Neville also calls this the feeling of the end, like that end result that you were trying to manifest for yourself, whether that's like maybe you want to fall in love with your soulmate. You have to be in the energy of already being that. I am already that. And yes. once you get that, the subconscious gets it. And now the seed is in the womb and the baby That's is it. being created. And you know that, don't you? You know it. You feel mm -hmm. it. I've had moments in my life when something happened, something in me, where I've had this sense, this is it. This is it. Like there is nothing is going to deter me. This is happening. And the thing happened mm -hmm. because they had no choice. Right, because it right. was in the subconscious and I had committed fully to that vision. And it's only those times that I've done that, that I've truly gotten what I desired, what I, what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Everything else, when I was like wishy-washy or letting people, you know, um, influence my beliefs, conditioning, right? Letting other people right. have a say about your dream, your vision is letting them condition you. It's not their dream. They're not you. So they don't have to agree. You've got to get to know yourself deep enough to know when you're really resonating with your own truth. And when you do, then you've just got to be brave and believe in it. Because that is your soul talking to you, telling you, wake up. This is, and it feels good, right? That's what mm -hmm. Neville's saying. It feels amazing. When you start feeling excitement about something, it's because it's for you. Yeah. And you just got to keep following that. And don't be afraid. Don't let people talk you out of it, fill you with fear. People want people to be scared because we all just want to keep each other sort of in this contained environment. So it's, 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 you got to be a little warrior to manifest yeah. what you truly want. Yeah. And, and, and it's possible, but you just have to dare to believe in yourself. Beautiful. All right, sister, I know you've selected some passages too. Let's get into them. 
Well, I think I've, we've covered quite a lot of okay. my points within okay. our discussions. Okay. But um, the last thing that I want to talk about is just one particular one. And he, it's where he talks about self-control. And he says, mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is your highest achievement. However, until perfect self-control is attained so that despite appearances, Notice he says appearance is not reality, right? You feel all that you want to feel. Use sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired state. These are the two gateways into the subconscious, according to Neville. I believe that hypnotherapy and hypnosis is literally like the, the giant gun of going into the subconscious, but... That wasn't a thing, I think, when Neville was around, was it? Or I don't know if he knew about it. I'm but, not sure, um, yeah. Hypnotherapy is a, is a, it's a dreamlike state, right? So yes. it is utilizing sleep, uh, a different kind of sleep. The body's asleep, mind's, mind's awake, awake mm -hmm. right? Which the yogis have been talking about as well for thousands of years, right? So the, these are truths. When things keep going around for so many thousands of years, you know that there's something mm -hmm. true within them. And so for me, it's that mastery of self-control. What does it really mean? A lot of times people think that um, that means you have to suppress what you feel. And it's not. It's that like that, that quote that you said about the Bible, that the problem is not in being angry. It's in, it's in uh, allowing yourself to continue to dwell, right? So what is self-control? First of all, becoming aware of yourself and your behavior and the role that you are playing in your own mind and in your own life. And then once you're able to recognize, oh, I'm sitting again with this thought that is not going to take me to where I want to go. It's having the discipline to keep choosing a new way, no matter how many times you have to do it without giving up. Because some roads are very worn. And some pathways of thinking are very worn within us. You know, we've been thinking of them for 40 years. So it may not be that in two or three days you eliminate that road. It might, but it may not. So it's how, how willing are you to keep choosing a different road, a different path, a different direction every time that trigger happens? I call it a trigger because it's not helpful. It's triggering a limiting belief. It's, tri it's tr um, triggering a response that is not what I wish to be for myself or others, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe that, and he says, it's your highest achievement because self-control is, I have gotten out of the conditioning. That's why I have self-control. And who is the self that's controlling? I find that that's still a little bit, for me, a little much in the world because there is the self that I think, it's, we become awakened to that ultimate self. That self that's boundless. And so in that joy, the conditioning just falls away. We're just trying to clean it up long enough to remember. And then once you remember, you just allow. And until you get there, which takes a lot of discipline and, you know, awareness. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's a whole spiritual practice of it your is. life. Then we use sleep and we use prayer, which are coincidentally, the next two chapters in this Correct. book, next week, we're going to be talking about sleep, but it is a quote unquote, easier way to get right to the subconscious, as opposed to just forging new neural pathways every single time, like the easier way to Absolutely. get to the subconscious to send the message and have her be impressed with it is to work with what Neville calls a state akin to sleep, which we mm -hmm. can also call sats, just work with sats, with hypnotherapy, meditation, mm -hmm. or just that beautiful little juicy, drowsy, hypnagogic. Is it hypnagogic Hypnog or hypnopompic? Which, which, what is it? Hypnagogic, hypnagogic state. What is hypnopompic? Is it coming out of the trance? I don't know, to be honest with you, because okay. the first time <laughs> I'm hearing it. But oh, okay. Hypnagogic, I recognize. And right. I know that that's true. It's just that state. And we're in it a lot. You know, we're in it. We're in it all the time. We just don't know. And so because we don't know, we're not utilizing it. That's what's so right. scary. Like when people veg out, I, I get terrified when I think about how much television people watch and how they're being programmed through the television watching uh, because they are in transits and everything's just dropping in. 
Yeah. Don't you notice how you're you're sitting there, you you're not hungry, and suddenly you're like, I need a chocolate ice cream. Where did that come from? Well, you don't even know, but there was a chocolate ice cream commercial or a something or a melt or whatever. Right. And so because you're so open, chocolate ice cream goes straight in and then action happens. Right. And we don't even question it. We just get up and go like robots, you know, robots to the refrigerator. Right. So yeah, we're being, we, we have to mind what we watch. We have to watch the quality of what we watch, the people. You know, my grandma used to say something and then I, and then I realized some super deep guy, I don't know who said the same thing. He said, you are the sum total. Your vibration is the equivalent of the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. Tony Roberts. Tony Roberts said that. Mm -hmm. My grandma used to say that. He said, a, the, the, the little group of friends, <laughs> your Latin grandma, the little group of friends that you hang out with, that equals who you are. That equals what you are. And that's her simplistic way of saying the same thing. You are equal to the sum total of that vibration to which you expose yourself. It, it normalizes whatever becomes normal in the group and makes weird whatever is not part of the group. And so you, you become entrained into that. So we've got to be selective when we pick people, situations, programming. We have to be conscious and awake. Well, I was just talking to someone recently about a time in my life when it was during my second marriage and I was just deeply unhappy and I was listening to so much music and I had a friend who said, well, are you, are you listening to music because you're depressed or are you depressed because you're listening to that music? Because wow. my playlist was just so like, you know, sad songs and just yes. super, I, I know now very low vibration, but it's just a constant rotation of this mm -hmm. music that I'm just letting into my very being and it's yes. coloring and tainting everything. So Neville Goddard also talks about going on something called an information diet, mm. which we could broaden and just say an energy diet. You know yes. how we have those, um, that allergy reduction diet, like you remove this first, remove corn, then we're going to remove wheat, and then we're going to mm -hmm. remove this. Like, I think that we should actually consciously begin to slowly but surely remove different things from our lives, including television. Oh, my God, social media. Yeah. Nutrition is a whole nother Oprah. Like, there are <laughs> a whole lot of things that we could start to just remove until we just open a very clear channel. Because I think that we're all living in reaction to that which we're taking in unconsciously. Well, we yes. got to get conscious to it. Well, you can't know what you don't know that you don't know, right? Right, right. So no judgment either. Yeah, and that's what and that's what we're doing. And 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 the crazy part was you said this to me the other day when we were talking. You know, the more you do spiritual work, the more you realize how much further you have to go. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at the beginning you think it's gonna take six months and I'm gonna go on a meditation retreat to the Himalayas and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be you know woke. And then you do it and you're like, Oh Lord, oh <laughs> yeah, Lord I'm, in heaven. I am so in the desert wandering around you know? with all these other people looking for the promised land. Yeah. Totally. So it's about being patient with yourself and, and utilizing the uncomfortableness as very good feedback. Like for me, one of my most important roles that I find in my life that I value the most is being a mother. I know that's true for you too. Mm -hmm. And for me, it is the most important thing to parent my son consciously. I want to do the least amount of damage so that he needs the least amount of therapy, <laughs> you right. know, because that's what I'm trying to do, raise a happy, balanced person. And I think about how what we don't heal, we give to them. What we don't own and heal within ourselves, we pass on to them. Mm -hmm. So he is my biggest inspiration to go do that dirty laundry and that cleaning up and that becoming conscious, no matter how arduous or long the road, because that is what I heal in myself. I do not give to him to bear, you know, ultimately. Yeah. You clear the whole timeline. You can. Yes. To yes. get back to your children. And if you believe in past life stuff or timeline stuff or ancestral healing, you can work with it that way as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this was so fantastic. I think now is the perfect time if you feel ready for us yes, to go I'm into ready. an integrative experience with Ellen. Absolutely. So again, if you're driving, or operating machinery or not able to just dedicate your full attention to this right now, please stop this recording and listen to it later when you're able to get to it. But if you're ready, allow your eyes to close. 
And I want you to focus your attention right between your two physical eyes to that space, that blue-black space between your eyes. And as you focus your attention there, I want you to take a deep breath in and exhale. Allow yourself to take another deep breath in as you focus there and exhale. And we'll do that one last time. Take a deep breath in, focusing on that blue-black darkness between your eyes. And exhale. And with every exhale, notice how this sends a message to your body that this is the time to go within. This is the time to experience presence the presence of you, the presence that is always there, even when you're walking or talking or moving, there's that awareness there that's observing, commenting on the comments that run through your mind, giving you feedback knowings whether something is true or not correcting in the most gentle way and as you sit here focusing your attention on that spot allow yourself to just relax with every breath that you take relax deeper and deeper into you And as you breathe, you feel, imagine, sense, or feel beautiful light right above your head. And it could be whatever light you'd like. Moonlight, sunlight, starlight, a waterfall of light that comes in through the top of your head, down through your eyes and over your face and mouth down into your throat and into your heart and as that water falls you feel yourself relaxing allowing it to wash away all that which is not you all that which you don't need to hold on to anymore in this space There's only presence and the peace that is that presence. And you continue to allow that light to go into your chest and your solar plexus and down into your abdomen and your hips, down your legs, into your ankles and out your toes and that light continues to travel down straight into the earth where that light anchors you in the deepest part of the earth and you can feel that you are connected within and without in that darkness of the earth while the light is shining down upon you you are complete You are here now. And in this space is where you create. In this space is the infinite potential of all that is. All you need to do is sit with yourself in this peace and allow whatever it is that you want to create to take root, to be fed by the light, to take comfort in the dark, rich soil of the earth. Just allow it. Bring to mind something you truly want in your life, something you deeply desire. Imagine it. Fill it with your energy. 
allow it to just become brighter and brighter for you. This wish that you will plant here in this fertile soil of I amness, of infiniteness. You are here now, and your being here brings all that is necessary for this desire to take root. So go ahead and plant it. Plant it in this earth. Plant it and know that it will take root. Trust that it is done. And it is so. And now that you've experienced this, I will begin to bring you back out to your regular and waking consciousness. But when you do, you'll come back different. You'll come back refreshed, alert, awake, and feeling so good about yourself, the world, and everyone in it. Because remember, you are the world pushed out. And since everything is good with you, everything is good with the world. So take a deep breath in and exhale, feeling your body, feeling the weight of your body wherever you are, on the chair, on the bed. Take another big breath in and noticing the sounds around you. And one last big breath in and as you exhale, you can open your eyes come back into this version of reality, feeling so good. Well, that felt really good, Alanique. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. That felt, that felt so good. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. I don't read anything. I just like to go with it, you know, because oh, it's, you, it's in the moment and you feel it and you feel it happening. You're channeling. You're gifted. It's it's wonderful. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, this first official, I mean, we did have one last week, our intro, but our first, yes. <laughs> our first week discussing a book I just thought was so great. I had so much I fun. Too. Me I too. Just, I can see all of the great things that we're going to be doing yes. in these beautiful conversations. I thought we would take just a couple of minutes before mm -hmm. we close to yes. maybe share our personal contact information because you're a hypnotherapist and you, yes. you don't, do you like focus on work with women? Can you tell us a little bit about your work and how we can reach out to you and get in contact? Absolutely. Well, my website is www.eleniquemarie.com and I am I'm a transformational coach for women. And I utilize all the different things that I've been blessed to study and, and learn through experience and through study, um, including hypnotherapy. But also we do a lot of um, NLP. We do uh, inner work for sure. We do a lot of um, changing belief systems, healing the inner child, because so much of what we carry is really from our childhood. You know, so we got to we got to rescue that little girl. We got to go back for her and let her know we didn't forget. We're here to claim her and bring mm -hmm. her where we are now. So that is my passion. It's my passion to work with women that truly want change, you know, transformational change and want to step into that light that they are, you know, and claim it. So uh, info at EM hypnosis would be the email info at EM hypnosis.com would be the email to reach me at. I'm in the process of building a new website. So hopefully I'll have Elanique or info at Elanique. I think Marie ever soon. since I've known you, you've been building a new website. I feel like you're right. <laughs> this is like time. the 11th iteration. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's getting better and better. Every day you're getting better and better, Elanique. Every day. <laughs> in every way. <laughs> well, for those who are interested in what I'm doing, um, I have got a YouTube channel. You know, I create content. I'm kind of slowing down on YouTube, uh, but... 
I've got a YouTube channel and you can check me out. I have over 800 metaphysical videos spanning the last decade. Just been talking my face off for about 10 years nice. on YouTube. Um, uh, you can check out my website, crystallancompton.com. I am launching a program in October called 360 Align and Activate, which is basically just a 30 day program meant to bring us back into presence, to open connections and channel of communication with the body, mind and spirit, and then to activate our future purpose. Like, I think some of us have forgotten because we've been Absolutely. in lockdowns and COVIDs and we've got stuff happening all over the world, wars and rumors of wars. And we're so fried and worn out that so many of us just need that refreshing. So these 30 days are meant to bring us back to center, to connect back to what really matters, and then just to activate our purpose and get back on that path. So to find out more about that, you can go to crystallandcompton.com slash 360. And anything I do, I'm going to post about it on my website. But awesome. Oh, I forgot to mention my YouTube channel. It's again, Elenique Marie on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. I talk I'm about, subscribed. You are. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's really, I just want to share tips and um, uh, protocols to help people, you know, with day to day life on, on this deconditioning process. So, you know, you're able to just go there and get that little reminder that we talked about, you know, that reminder yes. today to change something and stick with it you know so awesome there's that too okay well next week we have feeling is the secret by neville goddard chapter two if you haven't gotten the book yet please consider getting it and joining us you can yes. also get the complete neville goddard reader which has all not all of his works but many of his works and if you there you go the complete reader <laughs> just got it like if you really want to get into neville like get the reader yes. and start reading through his his work because it's life shifting and that's for sure again october we're going to be getting into the kabbalion and into the laws of the universe and so i'm super excited about that but until yeah. then i mean thank you so much for joining us we've had nothing but a good time and that's a fact that's a fact